Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Don Carr. Don has been described as a serial entrepreneur who currently runs three different successful companies. One, if which is called the Business Doctor Inc., where he and co-founder Don Glenn Smith help people create and run businesses that will thrive and help them build business credit without having to use a personal guarantee. Uh, so Don and his company helps businesses with everything from logo design to taxes. All right, welcome to the show, Don. Thank you. Yes, and this this show actually came about based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And this last uh, almost almost year and a half or a little bit more, we have had every situation and then some. So I'd love for you to share for the guests a time in your business and, or personal life where you experienced a difficult situation and how you got back on track. Um, it's a good question. I mean, so many experiences. It's hard to even think of one that stands out. Um, you know, probably would be uh, my software company. I have a software company called Blue Wave Technologies, and we uh, invented and patented some software for the loss prevention and security industry, basically facial recognition incident record database on a smartphone and <clears throat> excuse me when i was building this i was also running another company at the time and between the two companies i was burning the fuel from both ends yes. and it almost cost me my marriage it almost cost me my personal life uh because i wasn't present and mm -hmm. long story short uh i basically shelved the uh, software company and then dusted it off the shelf. So I shelved the software company until my daughter started preschool. So for about three years and then she started preschool about six months ago. So I took it off the shelf. Well, you know, you leave software on the shelf for two and a half years, you come back to a mess, right? <laughs> uh, so that it was. And uh, basically I just decided, you know what, I'm going to sell the whole company. Um, just everything and be done with it. So I met with some potential investors in Arizona and <clears throat> um, basically that didn't work out because one of the investors sold uh, uh, a software company that would, that, that the non-compete would put him in a, a precarious position if he bought this company. Um, so, but what that did is that, 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 rekindled my my fire and kind of my passion and my excitement about what I created in the first place three and a half years ago and um just I mean you might call it whatever you want to call it but you know the universe kind of conspired and I said well if I'm going to do this thing I can't nor do I want to do it by myself Right, I'm not going to be on a jet meeting with CTOs and COOs and CFOs and everything that ends in O, you know, once a week and again, being away from my family. Right. I said, so I'm going to bring on some investors. They're going to have skin in the game. They're going to sit on the board and they're going to help me lead this thing. Right. Um, and I did. I mean, I sold 49 percent of the company with five investors in six weeks. That's great. And it was just like, wow. Right. Me meant to be. How that happen? Uh, so sometimes, you know, we go down a course and we think it's the wrong course or we think we might have failed at it. Um, but sometimes that's just the course you go down to get to the ultimate path. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. So um, 
even if you don't stay the course or even, you know, I like to call it a, a business plan. I like to call that a business map, right? Mm. Plans change. Maps are dynamic, right? Yes. So you have a business map, you, you know, you know, sometimes there's going to be a detour. It's going to be a bump in the road, uh, kind of like bootstraps and uh, bra straps, right? How do you bounce back? Mm -hmm. right? um, and that's really what it's about. That's really the, the test of the character is uh, how you bounce back, right? Yes. Um, so yeah, kind of a little personal story there from one of my companies. Wow. That's outstanding and, and fortunate you're able to sell during these times and, and have investors and, and run your business and still have your family life. I think that the universal pause kind of gave us all a wake up call to what matters most, a little reminder. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so to, to have both to be able to run your business and have that time with family. I, to me, it's like, why do I have businesses? Why do I do what I do? Yes, to help other people, but obviously to also be with my family and, and provide for them. So if I'm not able to be with them, it's kind of pointless, you know? So it, it does make a big difference. Now, one of the things that I love about what you do with um, your, your other business um, is that business credit. And I, I learned about business credit, literally started a gift store at 23 years old, got six months rent free, it was 5,000 square feet. So a dollar hmm. square foot, $5,000 a month. And so that six months went really quick <laughs> with the free mm -hmm. rent. And I actually was very successful, but I learned about business credit quickly. And being in retail, you start, they said, can you do net net 60, net, net 30, they start with, and they start giving you credit. And then I somehow built credit. And by the time I was 24, I could go anywhere. I bought the other buildings. So that was a lease. I bought four other buildings in California using business credit primarily. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a secret that the other people in the shopping park, I started in the Montrose shopping park in Glendale, California, Montrose, California, it's kind of a um, part of Glendale. But anyway, I started there and the shopping park, all the members were like, how are you doing this? You're, you know, you're like one third our age, half our age. <laughs> and I was like, it's a business credit. I walked in and got a van for the store, zero credit, zero interest, you know, and it was with the business credit, they give you even better terms than yeah. personal credit. Now, some of the business owners actually started using the credit too. And they they actually went on to buy their buildings because they were leasing. And that gave them a much better position to either sell their company or sell the name and then rent out their building. And the ones that were paying rent didn't have the business credit. What they would do is during the Christmas holidays to prepare, you buy in July uh, for retail <laughs> for Christmas <laughs> and holidays. And so they would use their like HELOC or home mortgage on their personal side. Yeah. And if things went wrong, which things changed really quickly, um, and a lot of people, not only did they lose their business, but then they lost their home and, and their personal credit went went out the window also. So business credit is definitely the key. And I'd love for you to share more about your, your company with the business doctor and how business credit works for those just starting a business. Yeah, you know, it's so refreshing to hear you say that, Sheila. Um, it really is. And it's, you, you know, just to backtrack for a minute on something that can be frustrating sometimes is, you know, this is, I've, I've been in this industry as a side hustle for the past 13, 14 years. Um, having my mentor taught me or originally how to do it for one of my small companies, one of my first companies 14 years ago, 15 years ago. And, you know, so on this level, the business doctor with my partner, Dr. Glenn Smith, PhD in accounting, finance, business management, um, that, you know, we're trying to take it to the highest level to reach as many folks as possible to help as many as possible. Um, this is not my primary source of revenue uh, and it's not his, right? We do it because we enjoy the podcast. We enjoy the episodes. We enjoy the YouTube. We enjoy stuff like this. We enjoy helping entrepreneurs thrive. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've done like, you know, some uh, 
clubhouse stuff and you know some other social media stuff and it takes a while to gain traction with this stuff Mm -hmm. and it gets so frustrating sometimes because you're like how can people i'm trying to give you the keys to the kingdom right and it's like either they don't hear you or they don't get it or or, uh, both i don't know what it is um you think people would be beating down the door you know willing to take free money and not risk their personal lives and financial livelihood for a company and um it, it's not happening yet but it will right? mm-hmm. because we know that persistence uh will often determine success right so um you know to hear you say you you know you've had personal experience with this it's a big deal and you have a lot of listeners and a lot of people that, that follow you and um that's that's awesome and I often ask folks, I say, why do we form an LLC or a Mm C-Corp? And most people say, well, to protect myself, right? To protect myself or give myself a veil of protection from the liability of the company and that of my personal liability. So the company can get sued, but hopefully I don't get sued if I don't, as long as I don't pierce the veil, right? And, uh, most people seem to get that. And it seems like today more and more people are taking that step compared to five or 10 years ago of actually getting the LLC, C Corp or S Corp. But what we never talk about and is rarely talked about is the second thing we should be doing. The very next step after we form that article, that, that, uh, that, that entity is we should be protecting our personal finances and creating that veil of protection on a financial level. Uh Liability level equals LLC C Corp. Financial veil of protection equals business credit under the EIN, not with a personal guarantee. That should be the very next thing we do for the very reason we formed the corporation in the first place. And it's so obvious to me. It's obvious to you. It's obvious to the big boys, which is why the big boys do that, right? Um, And we want to make it more obvious to just your everyday bootstrapped solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, even the entrepreneurs who who want to be an entrepreneur, right? Um, We want to make it more obvious. And we have a program. I mean, you could fumble your way through this and and things are always changing in the industry um, with regard to starter accounts and how you do it and what uh, I's need to be dotted and T's need to be crossed. But there's a very specific process to doing it right and to making sure everything is airtight so that you don't get flagged Mm -hmm. Um, the business credit world has no fair credit reporting act right there's no there's no protections for the business credit world like there are for the consumer credit world Uh Um, it's kind of the wild west these lenders vendors creditors banks make up their rules it's their rules and if you want to play you play if you don't have a good day so um you know we have a program it's a rapid program three four five six months our clients have a hundred thousand dollars hundred and fifty thousand dollars in corporate credit like you said they can buy buildings they can buy vehicles fleet vehicles uh properties rental properties uh investment properties uh american express corporate amazon costco visa sam's club mastercard i mean you know why wouldn't you set your business up and protect yourself mm-hmm. by doing this, right? Kind of a no-brainer. Um, so that's kind of what we do. Yes, yes. Now, so that takes so many months. Um, from start to finish, what would you say for like somebody that just started their side business and they're actually getting some income in there and ready to build credit, what what are the steps to get started for that? How does that work? So we have a complete back-end dashboard and platform. That's a step-by-step approach. Um, so it actually walks the client through step 1A, 1B, 1C through the entire process from getting the EIN to the DUNS number to the virtual business office to the dedicated business number to the professional voiceover greeting when somebody calls the the number to the logo design to the website to the business bank account to the merchant. So we have a you know a process for, for each of these things. We also have a customer support team that will walk them through anything and hold their hand through anything that they have questions with. So 
brand new company, got the EIN, has done the 10 steps of credibility with regard to the virtual address and the dedicated phone number and logo and website. And you've done those 10 credibility things, which takes about a week if you're on the ball. Um, you know, you're talking like depends on, on, on what the individual wants. So if a person wanted to max it out nine to 12 months and they'd be looking at 250,000 to 400,000 in corporate credit, never using their social. If they wanted to stop it at like 100,000, 125,000, just where they got the credit cards and for whatever their intent and purpose was to ease cash flow, um, they could stop at like four months or six months and be at 150,000. Um, so it's really just how far somebody wants to take it. If they you know, want to be able to buy the properties and stuff like that, they're going to want to at least have 12 to 16 accounts reporting on their business credit profiles, which would put them at about nine to 12 months. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It took me about a year to really build it to where I could just go anywhere and get a car and then yep. start buying. I did not like paying 5000 a month to rent this building. Yeah. So I bought four other buildings. I was like, you know what? I'm buying these buildings. And I had yeah. buildings that had other tenants. And so it, my mortgage was almost covered. And yeah. I off rapidly with the income from the stores and that really helped uh and people were like wow you're a genius and i was like i don't know how it it came about <laughs> i act it was all like somebody said get the s corp it was an s corp back in the day that i had and uh with that i thought oh that's so expensive but i needed that fine do whatever they tell you to do and it it just was i think with retail you're almost forced to start credit sooner because mm -hmm. you're have to reinvest and then there's the reinvesting in marketing so to have some type of a credit line that's a business credit that's not attached to your personal credit is such a gift because you're able to reinvest when you first start out i think it was six months into it that i when i started having to pay that rent because i had the six month <laughs> free rent deal that i thought was like forever at 23 six months is like six years <laughs> So, and so when that happened, I said, oh, I need to hire a marketing company. And that, I think my, in, my income probably quadrupled after I started investing in marketing and then learning how to market with other people and collaborate with different related businesses and get free ads and all this other stuff. But it was a big learning curve. And as I built the credit, I started using the business credit and I protected my family. I adopted three children and had three of my own over the years. So six kids got to go through to college and have all their, you know, schooling, everything they needed all through the business was, you know, what founded and funded everything <laughs> that we did. And it was such a gift. And then if something happened and with children, there's so many expenses that come up. Um, and you have a little one. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where you don't you want that personal credit for emergency fund. You mm -hmm. want that personal credit for when the braces happen and when all these things need to happen. Um, you want that for those special trips or the extra tutor you need because whatever is going on or the injury that you didn't expect in sports. And I could go on <laughs> with all those surprises. And if you use it on your business, you don't have it for your family. Yeah, it's a good and point. That's that's where the problems start. Yeah. So, you know, definitely you got to pay your your payments on your business intra um, business loans, um, business credit. You got to pay everything on time, just like personal credit so you can build it. But, you know, if something goes wrong or different or you go out of business, it doesn't affect you and you still have your home and you could buy another home or, you know, whatever you need to do. Yeah, you can start a new company easier, and you can start a new life, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I oh my gosh, there was this point where buying all these buildings and paying them down, and I thought, wait a minute, I'm raising these kids, and I'm working so many hours running the business, and I want to go back to school and get a degree. Do you know what I? The most important thing I I learned was this utility, the cost, the cost of doing business for me was this utility cost, and the next day. I told everybody in the store within six months, we're closing and I'm going to rent the buildings out hmm. to other businesses and I am going to teach. Uh, so I got a teaching degree and I taught at my kid's school for the rest of the time. And that's what I did because I had the credit in place. I started other businesses, obviously, and but I was able to then design life on my terms. 
And it really was so helpful to, to have that. How could I buy these buildings without the business credit? It would have been impossible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I like what you're doing too with the bootstraps and bra straps. You know, I belong to some female groups, some women groups um, on, uh, uh, what is it? Clubhouse and stuff. And anytime we can do something to help uh, women entrepreneurs thrive and uh, underserved communities thrive, uh, it's always a blessing to do that. Yes, yes, it makes a big difference. I, you know, I was raised by these beautiful grandparents and mostly women <laughs> that that all had businesses before the time when it was a thing for women to run businesses, whether it was because the, the husband passed away or wasn't healthy enough to run the business or they just did their own business because they needed to. And so for me, I, I was raised by these women that super stoic. They had these stories. Uh, one came from a concentration camp and lost her whole family and went through all that. I mean, my grandmother lived to be 108. She was born in 1908. And, <laughs> and wow. so she had the history that now we are living through times that grandma's stories, all these elders that she had around, these stories are gold. There's so many lessons in it. And for to be a, a, a woman in business, you don't have to lose your feminine. You can still raise your family and do beautiful things. And with, with the business credit, then you can hire help and, and do what you need to do to be with your family so that you're able to give the time that's required uh, for what matters most. Absolutely. Friends. Yes. Now, for somebody that wants to get started, what what exactly do they do? Is there a place they go to sign up or? Yeah. Uh, one of the best things they can do is um, <clears throat> go to the business doctor website. That's the business doctor dot us and schedule a free business evaluation and consultation with Dr. Glenn Smith. Right. Not often do we get PhDs that are willing to give their time away for free. Uh, but Dr. Glenn does. Right. And he'll take into consideration everywhere you're at, where your business is at, kind of help you create that uh, road map. Right. The business map um, and see what you have, what you don't have, what you need and tell you how fast you can do the program. Some people do it in just a few months. Uh, and, you know, it's like five ninety nine initial payment and then one forty nine a month mm -hmm. for the entire program. Some people do it six months. Some people do it 12 months. Um, and when you, you decide that you're done and you have what you want credit wise, you stop. Uh, there's no contract, there's no commitment. Um, and I mean, you can get enrolled online, um, but take advantage of having somebody that has a doctorate in um, business finance, uh, MBA, master's business administration, um, and, and leverage dr smith's time um to your advantage and you know schedule that 15 minute consultation first right because that's free advice <laughs> from yeah. some from somebody who's uh credentialed to give it mm. and then and then uh you know a lot of these other uh professionals that provide advice you know they want three four five six hundred dollars i mean it's not cheap yeah. right and we could do that but we don't want to do that because we want to help as many folks as possible. So mm -hmm. yeah, the business doctor us. That's great. Now you also have a podcast. Can you share about that? We do. That's my favorite thing of all the things I do and all the hats I wear, um, you know, doing the podcast with Dr. Glenn Smith is my favorite. You know, we banter back and forth. We don't edit the podcast, mm -hmm. which, uh, what you hear is what you get. And uh, we go over some pretty awesome topics, you know, and we just go back and forth and we don't always agree. We don't always disagree. We just go back and forth. And, uh, you know, somebody who's had myself, you know, 14, 15 companies, uh, you know, uh, college dropout, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who understands things on a real practical hands on level versus somebody who teach us a lot of these concepts to students because he's also a professor nice. uh you know so it's it's great and uh it's educational it's informative we enjoy the heck out of it and uh we even love to have you on sometime 
thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's called the Business Doctor Podcast, and uh, you can find that on Apple, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's wonderful. Now, maybe tell me a couple of your favorite topics that have shown up over this last year, especially during this interesting time um, on your podcast. Yeah, uh, there's a couple recently uh, that are probably my favorites because as we do it, it gets better and better. Uh, uh, there's a recent episode called The Value Add. Um, it's kind of like what it implies, right? How do we how do we add value and what does it mean to have a value first perspective? Mm. You know, what's in it for me versus first, let me focus on what I can do for you. Yes. Right. And that's that's not an easy thing. That's not the natural inclination of us human beings, right? We've been raised in a world of reciprocity, right? Mm -hmm. What can you do for me, you know? And based on what you can do for me, I'll tell you what I can do for you. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We've all been hearing it, especially our generation, our yeah. whole life, right? And um, that's not the ticket, mm -hmm. you know? It's 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 really not. And our parents told us, you know, well, you might want to help Timmy because you never know. One day you might need Timmy's help. <laughs> right? yes. We've been hearing that since we were kids. Um, but that's not the ticket. Right. When you can live a life and make decisions and do things for people out of genuineness. Mm -hmm. Right. Versus what am I going to get out of it? Or yeah. I better be getting something out of it. It's life changing. I don't want to go on down a rabbit hole. But we, 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 we go down a couple of them during the episode. It's called The Value Add. Um, another one's called The Great Credit Debate. Right? Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, listen, I don't have many bills. I don't really need credit. Um, you know, business credit's not for me. Is that something I should even be doing if I don't need it? Mm. Oh, good question, right? We dive into that answer or answers. Okay. Um, and then... We did one. We had a guest interview recently, Steve, uh, Chief, Steve, Chief Stephen Pelez, retired police chief mm -hmm. out of uh, Oklahoma, uh, also a pretty serious entrepreneur. And his entrepreneurship ties into the title of the episode. Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to give it away, but I'll leave you. I'll, I'll leave you hanging. The title of the episode is Why Are So Many Cops Still Committing Suicide? Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? Grave question. Mm. and he answers it and, he's built, and then he's building a business yeah to address it that's great yeah. pretty cool so i interviewed him that was fun that was about four weeks ago mm -hmm. um so the value add the great credit debate and why are so many cops still committing suicide yes that's that sounds really good now the value add to me this is so important and when it comes from a heart space I think it can make all the difference in your business. So my gift stores had a program that I worked with the government, Job Training Partnership Act, JEPTA, they called it. And I created back with the camcorders where I would video my trainings and I trained close to 200 kids that were at risk, um, emancipating from foster care on how to run a gift store. Mm -hmm. And they would do every aspect of retail for six months and they would get my letter of recommendation when they went through the program they had to complete the program and then they would get hired at, you know, the top stores, you know, Nordstrom's and back in the Broadway, back in the day and all these stores. And so nobody wanted to hire them. That was my heart. And the community felt that. And that's why I believe, you know, yes, I use business credit because it helped fund my dreams and the dreams of all these kids. And that made I was making a difference. So when I go to bed at night, when I went to bed at night then, and now I know I did my best and I was helping somebody else. And that could be with anything. So even for a nonprofit, you definitely can have business credit. Yep. Yes. Um, can you share a little bit about that? What the differences are? Or is it the same road for a nonprofit for? Yeah, um, it's a good question, actually. Uh, it's a common question. And it is the same exact road. There is no difference. A nonprofit is a corporation. Mm -hmm. um, it just has to do with how you're taxed, right? It's wow. a it's yeah. a, it's a five hundred one c three election versus an okay. s election, or right. So it's it's just how you're taxed. Um, 
The cool thing about building cre business credit the right way is it doesn't, you don't have to have revenue. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can be a brand new company. I just got your EIN this morning and get this business credit if you do it right. There are so many little landmines thrown out there by the creditors, vendors, and banks mm -hmm. to weed out. <laughs> um, that it's easy to step on one of those if you don't do it exactly just so. So as long as you do it just so, you can be a brand new company. You don't have to have a penny in revenue and you'd have all the same benefits and types of credit as if you were been in business for 20 years um, and had a million dollars in revenue. Uh, mm -hmm. Speaking of being in business for 20 years, I can't tell you how many businesses that have been in business 20, 30 years that are still personally guaranteeing their business. Yeah. Oh, yes. So common. Right. People think because they've been at it 20, 30 years, they've got the mm -hmm. business credit figured out. They don't. Right? Mm -hmm. 99% of businesses don't have business credit that's not personally guaranteed by their personal credit. Yes, it's so true. I remember this one store that was near me that had, I, I, I don't want to say their name, but they, they're gone out of business and retired. They literally had that store selling like designer clothes um, since I was little. When I was a little, like fifth grade, sixth grade, they had these designer jeans and <laughs> fifty dollars for for they Shemendifer and Jordache, and and we would all have to wear these design. And I was my grandparents were like, "Oh, are you kidding me? Are you crazy?" And I had to earn my own money to buy my jeans. But mm -hmm. they they were they were making money for years and years. When I was in business, they did very well still. And the problem was they never did use business credit and then when the it was a husband and wife team when the husband got sick all the money went to care for him and they the, the business went out instead of being able to resell that very successful business it just that that's the difference that it made and yeah it was really hard on the family you nailed it uh and that and that able and, I, and i'm able to sum something up because of what you just said Business credit without a personal guarantee enables your company to stand on its own. Mm -hmm. That's the difference, right? Uh, if you don't give your business the opportunity to build business credit without using your social security number, it's the biggest disservice you could ever do to your business mm -hmm. because you're going to be that crutch for the business, its entire life or your entire life, whichever expires first, yeah. right? So don't do your business or yourself that disservice. Empower the business to stand on its own should it come time or life happens and yeah. it needs to stand on its own. Because yeah. if you can't stand and it's dependent on you, it won't stand either. Mm -hmm. makes all the difference and I know I hired my kids to help out in the business <laughs> over the years when they got older and you pay them through the corporation and they're paying into social security and they're learning about money savings and this and that but they actually had to do the work and so they learned about work and instead of just oh here honey have a car or whatever they had to earn it whether they worked at my business or they went and got a job somewhere else and some of them didn't want to work in the business because they were sick of it because it was part of our life for so many years so they would go do their own thing and that you know they're all little entrepreneurs now they yeah. have their own little side business uh yeah. whatever they're doing even my daughter studying psychology has a little side business and it's really made a difference on their success. Yeah. Yeah. You, rather, yeah. you taught them how to fish mm -hmm. instead of giving them the fish. Right. So uh, it's the, it's, it's, that was the biggest gift you could have ever given them. Sheila is teaching yeah. them how to get it from the dirt. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. those parents that just hand it out to them and, and leave them a fat trust fund that they have access to when they're 18, they're creating monsters. Yeah. Right. And it's the yeah. biggest disservice we could do to our kids. It's um, really interesting because it creates resentment. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't know this with my first. I gave him a car <laughs> and there was resentment. 
and he was the hardest to get out, <laughs> get out of the <laughs> and, and, and you know, but now he's wonderful and successful on his own. But but it was, and I learned, oh, that was a mistake. And then yeah. you know, going down to my youngest and the kids that bought their they bought their own cars, and I got this. I bought I got my own credit to buy my own car. I got whatever they had to do, and they got nice cars and. It was like, okay, great. I'm going to help pay for your college. So you're not in debt there. You pay for your car, do your little side job. But it made a big difference in how they cared for the car, yeah. how cautious, um, insurance wise, all that, because, you know, okay, I'm going to be careful. I don't want to, you know, dent my car or get into an accident because I pay for this car. And so it really, it really made a big difference. And uh, you know, I lived in an area where most of the kids in high school had nicer cars than I did. And I ran all those. I mean, I just didn't buy really. I bought nice cars, but they were like pre-owned. <laughs> you know, so, mm -hmm. Like buy a, a brand new Mercedes BMW for your high schooler. <laughs> and this is the first time they've ever driven. Okay. It doesn't even have a mile on it. Are you serious? <laughs> Why? And so there's so much to that. And there's just that standing on your own two feet yeah. that the kids, everybody needs that. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree. Now going forward, what goals do you have for your um, business doctor um, business? So, uh, you know, again, we want to help as many folks as possible and we've actually restructured the pricing recently to be able to do that. So mm -hmm. it used to be much more expensive and you used to have to come out with a lot more out of pocket to do the program. But uh, recently, like I said, we're down to five ninety nine one time payment and then one forty nine a month for the um, duration of the program. And uh, so we just want to get the word out and do stuff like the Sheila Mack show mm -hmm. and um, continue with the podcast, give out those free consultations and business evaluations. And eventually, once you help enough people, People talk uh -huh. and just word spreads organically, right? Be like, man, you got to check out this company. Here's what they did for me. You know, once you get to that point, um, you know, you can kind of sit back a little bit and breathe easier uh, knowing that, you know, the fruits of your labor are being spread or organically because of how you've been able to help folks. Yes. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. Stay the course and keep helping as many businesses thrive as possible. Mm, very good. Now, I always ask my guests, um, when you were young, what advice would you give your younger, like, teenage self going forward for life? <laughs> hmm. That's a good question. Um, hmm. Or perhaps what would you want your your son or daughter to hear at that age to prepare for our world today? Um, you can't see my wall of <laughs> pillars in front of me. On the podcast, it's behind me. I've got kind of a dual set up here. But um, number one on my wall of pillars of success is execution mm. it's taking action to put a plan in motion mm -hmm. and make things happen today that's not webster's definition that's my definition um so e execution right uh it's it's a it's a gift to execute and fail Mm -hmm. And then to just keep executing despite the failure till you get it right. And it's, um, you know, I love failing. Like, I think it's great. And I think it's a misnomer. And right. I think every time I, I get something wrong, some people call it getting it wrong. Some people call it failing. Um, I call it an opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I don't learn when I get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Got it right. There's no lesson there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I like not getting things right. Sometimes I beat myself over the head and it's frustrating, but at the end of the day, I learn something, 
probably at the level I can teach it at that point because <laughs> I get it at its core in the most fundamental sense, right? Um, but never stop executing because ideas are a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got an idea or 50. Right. But what do you do with the idea? Right. Yeah. Execute, 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 execute. Even if it costs you a bunch of money, even if it costs you a bunch of headache, even if it's a bunch of failure and a ton of opportunity for growth, execute. Execute and get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Execute and get it right. But don't stop executing because an ounce of execution is more than a ton of talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love that. That is incredible. That is the perfect saying. And it's so true. I, I have noticed over the years, there's there's so many people that will uh, pay money for programs and not implement. They won't take action or they'll pay for training a course and they'll be a great student. But then when it comes to actually taking action, the fear sh sets in and it doesn't work out. And it doesn't, it's, it's really, Sometimes, you know, the whole thing about shoot for the stars, you get something. Well, if you don't shoot for anything because you're, you're never executing, you're stuck. Stuck. Yeah. And so I, I, I have definitely been in that, that learning where I have had many <laughs> failings and learnings and having to redo things or change the way I'm doing whatever it is. And that's how I learned. And I had to learn fast because nobody taught me. It was me learning by doing that's right. so that that's a perfect, beautiful thing to do. And parents listening in, listen to that advice. Let, you know, give your kids some ways to learn and fail when it's safe, when they're little, when the consequence is, yeah, you got a bad grade because you didn't do it right or you didn't study. Let that be a consequence versus um, a serious situation when they're teens and above. That's just much easier, safer. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and now we're going to switch into our topical discussion. So before we do that, um, could you share the website again for people to connect with The Business Doctor? Indeed, it's thebusinessdoctor.us. All right. And now for our topical discussion, I'd like to go ahead and get into a little bit of sharing about how the business doctor works and and what we can expect as a new business getting started. How do we even get business credit? So the business doctor, uh, it's pretty much a self-led course. Um, you do have, you can chat with support, you can call support. Um, they're available to answer your questions and answer the phones five days a week. Uh, you can um, email support, but basically once you enroll in the program, you set up your login credentials to the dashboard, the portal. Um, once you log into the dashboard portal, everything's laid out for you with videos and instructionals and tutorials. And you fill out a field and if it's that's complete, you click next and it's literally just next, 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 next lesson. Right. Um, and everything is laid out clearly, concisely, easy to understand, easy to navigate. And you're learning, right? It's, we designed it as a course so that not only you can obtain a desired result through it, but you can learn from it. Now you know what it looks. And that's why we have you do it yourself, right? We could do it. We could do it for you, but we're not going to do it for you, right? We want you to do, we'll support you, but we want you to do it yourself so that you can understand in intimately what it takes to build business credit. And more importantly, <clears throat> business credit's half of the equation. The other half of the equation is what we call business credibility. Mm -hmm. What's business credibility? Well, you can take the word credibility and exchange it for legitimacy, right? And it's not just how the vendors, creditors, lenders, and banks look at you, but it's also how potential clients look at you. Uh -huh. right? You ever call a phone for a service provider and it's, you've reached three, two, seven, mailbox is full. All right. Like, what am I calling here? <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Or you, they answer and say, hello. <laughs> oh, 
It's like, well, uh, hi, is this uh, ABC Plumbing? <laughs> right? So just before a word is spoken, you can say a thousand things about your company and its legitimacy and, and presence and credibility. Um, and those are some of the checks and balances that the event member, a, 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 a lender, a creditor, they are giving your business credit without you personally guaranteeing it. Meaning if your business is one of the 96% that fell in the first five years, they're out of gas. Mm -hmm. So the risk to benefit ratio for them is not on their side. Yes. So what do they do to help mitigate their risk? Well, there's 10 things and it's called business credibility. And it's a checklist. This is how we set you up for success, right? And we go through and we make sure everything is just so. Mm -hmm. Everything from your address to the business phone number, to the greeting, to the press one menu option, to your logo, to your website, to your email address, right? To what type of email address are you using? Is it abcplumbing at gmail.com or is it info at abcplumbing.com? Mm -hmm. uh, these things seem small. They seem trivial. And it blows my mind how many companies are still doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's critical. For if these things are not in place, you will either get very low limits or nothing at all. So, mm -hmm. And what helped you in retail was that you had a physical brick and mortar building. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, we don't allow our clients to have P.O. boxes. We don't allow our clients to have to use a home address. Mm -hmm. uh, those are things that can flag you. And people that try to get business credit n by using a P.O. box and they, they get flagged and they do all they can sing about how business credit doesn't work. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> doesn't work. I tried it. They denied me. It's no good. It's a lie. Right. Um, well, there's some things that you didn't do just so. Right. And. So, uh, you know, you don't have to pay a thousand bucks a month for an office space, but you do have to have a particular type of virtual brick and mortar business address that's 40 bucks a month. That is a physical space that you can go to and use the desk and use the conference room and pick up your mail and have a secretary. And it's a real deal. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not a mail drop. It's not a right. uh, I forget the postal places, the not the UPS store, right? <laughs> um, right. <laughs> Mailbox, etc. Yes. Um, yeah. so, so that so true. It's so important, and it makes a big difference. I mean, I I actually have a studio at my other home. I have two homes, so I have a studio in my other home that I rent the office, and I have my recording studio here, and it's it's in a beautiful place, and I have somebody at the front desk, and all these things that are included, but it's I don't want it at my home. <laughs> so it just it, it makes sense and have clients coming in and yeah. mail coming in and things coming in and so you need to have that even for your own safety as you're running a business you don't at a certain point want people to come to your house that's correct <laughs> that's correct you're with your address plastered all over the internet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's a big deal um so provided we do those first 10 things, uh, first 10 mm -hmm. steps in that credibility, legitimacy process. It's not only huge for your business in and of itself, when somebody looking at you versus the guy that doesn't have these things in place, well, they don't seem like such a reputable company and you do. So guess who gets the phone call, right? Um, so that's huge for business and growth and sustainability, but it's also mandatory and imperative to build business credit properly. Mm, yes, that makes so much sense. It's like I had to hire a CPA and then get help with getting the business credit makes sense because you're the talent running the business, especially when you're starting out. And so all that time is going to be saved and the wrong steps can cost you more money and time than than you need to take. So it sounds like an incredible opportunity. And um, I'd love for you to share again how people can connect with with your program and get started so yeah the easiest way is just go to the business doctor.us www i think that was four w's how about <laughs> www.thebusinessdoctor.us these days you don't even have to put www you can just type in the business doctor.us you can also call the 800 number on there uh, somebody will answer during business hours 
um, you, the easiest thing to do is to click for that. There's a big green banner up top that says schedule your free business evaluation. Now click on that, get connected with myself and with Dr. Glenn Smith, pick his brain, find out where you're at and let's get you on a path that for all intents and purposes, um, should be the very next thing we do after we protect ourselves through an LLC, C Corp or S Corp. Thank you, Don, for being a guest on the show. And we will return after these messages. So stay tuned. It was a pleasure. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on KCAA radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack. And today I wanted to give a special thanks and shout out to the business doctor, Inc helping businesses thrive. So I actually was a small business owner for many years. And when I first started out, I learned of this incredible tool, business credit. I did not have to use my personal credit to fund my business. And you will be surprised at all the benefits that this program has to offer. So as business owners, why do we form an LLC or a corporation? Well, it's pretty simple, right? To protect ourselves personally from the liability of the company. The very next thing we should be doing as business owners is protecting ourselves personally from the finances of the company. The Business Doctor is funded by Dr. Glenn Smith, PhD in Business Management, Accounting and Finance. Schedule your free business evaluation and consultation at thebusinessdoctor.us. Enroll in the Rapid Business Credit Builder Program and get up to 100,000 business credit under company's EIN and DUNS number in less than six months, never having to use personal credit. That's the businessdoctor.us or call them directly at 1 866 383 1030. That's 1 866 383 1030. And let them know that you heard about them on the Sheila Mack Show. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the Boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation especially right now the life has knocked you down pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today is not one size fits all just like a pair of boots or a bra so the formula is designed to help you through any situation to grab a copy of my new best-selling book bootstraps and bra straps the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation it is now available on audible as well as on amazon and kindle and at www.sheilamack.com